You're watching Marketplace Africa. I'm Robin Kerno here in Alexandra Township in Johannesburg. Now, walking these streets, it's hard to miss all the young people hanging about unemployed. In fact, half of South Africa's youth is jobless, and it's a similar story across Africa. So, for this week's show, we've got Vlad Dutier in Lagos, David McKenzie in Nairobi, and Ian Lee in Cairo, who all take a look at youth unemployment across the African continent. I'm Ian Lee in Egypt, where roughly 30% of the country's youth is unemployed. High unemployment among young people has plagued Egypt for years, but for many, the problem became worse here in Cairo's Tahrir Square. While the country's revolution that ousted President Hosni Mubarak started here and brought democratic change, it also brought instability and insecurity, keeping tourists away and investors out. Egypt's economy has yet to recover, <laughs> leaving many people like aspiring singer Sharif Mohammed with little hope for the future. Those who had modest jobs, the revolution killed them completely and destroyed their lives and now there are no jobs whatsoever. Mohammed met me in his Cairo neighborhood of Masaradima. Ever since Mubarak stepped down 20 months ago, the 24-year-old has been unable to afford university, forcing him to look for a job. In a country where more than 13 percent of the population is unemployed, finding work is hard. Finding good work is harder. I tried working in restaurants, coffee shops, clothing stores, and lately worked at my brother's store, who treated me in a business-like manner with no regard to brotherhood. The wages are not sustainable at all. Many Egyptians, like Mohammed, believe it's the government's responsibility to find them work. Former minister and University of Cairo professor Ahmed Barai says government employment isn't the answer. There's a big problem in Egypt where people are employed in sectors that do not need workers. The government employs five and a half million employees, while they only need two million. Barai believes foreign investment holds the key to solving Egypt's financial woes. Mohammed also sees investment as the key and hopes someday someone will invest in him. Here in Nigeria, Sub-Saharan Africa's biggest oil exporter grew at a brisk 7.4 percent last year, and estimates are that this year the growth will continue between 7 and 8 percent. But Nigeria has one of the fastest growing populations in the world, which is set to double by the year 2035. And although recent data shows that one and a half million more people entered the workforce since 2009, unemployment, especially young people, even those with college degrees, is rising. And although more people are going to school, the unemployment rate has not dropped. Estimates are that it's around 17 percent in urban areas and close to 25 percent in rural areas. Enter Jobberman, one of the fastest growing job search websites in Africa. And with the unemployment rate so high, needless to say, business is booming. Jobberman has over 5,000 job listings at any given time. And CEO Ayodeji Adewemi tells me that the site attracts 21,000 unique job seekers per month, which keeps his staff of 48 extremely busy. When we set out to do Jobberman, it was really about creating the, the largest uh, catalog of jobs. Uh, in Nigeria, for Nigerians, whether in Nigeria or outside Nigeria. From the statistics out there, there are about 16.7 uh, million uh, small businesses in Nigeria. They are only able to hire 32 million people. A lot of Nigerian uh, graduates think a, a job is an entitlement. A job is never an entitlement. Growth has to be inclusive. Uh, yeah, Africa is growing at a, a very uh, fast rate in terms of economic, uh, economy wise. But when you look at uh, Nigeria, again, from a macro level, you discover that Nigeria is really a non-diversified uh, economy in the sense that uh, we're very dependent on natural resources like oil. If we can do a lot uh, in terms of agriculture in the country, we'll be able to um, employ not only the skilled but also the unskilled uh, uh, graduates in and outside of Nigeria. I'm David McKenzie at the University of Nairobi. Now, some of Kenyan's best and brightest graduate from here and enter the job market. When they get there, they face severe challenges. Some 40% of Kenyans are unemployed. Most of them are youth. 
I sat down with three promising students and found out just how hard it is to enter Kenya's job market. And you're about to enter the job market. What is the prospect of actually getting a job? We are about 300 of us in class, in the smaller classes. And the big ones are around 700. So I'm competing with around 700 people to get the same job, probably in the same place. So it's, it's pretty thin. There's so many graduates who've been through campus and still jobless. And I don't think the government is doing enough to, to, to solve that situation. What do you think needs to be done to create more jobs? A lot has to be put in place to encourage the youth to engage in their passion. So much about creation of opportunity and that's why the government comes in. Unless we get good governance in Africa, job market will not change. You know, since 2005 or so, the private sector in Kenya has really blossomed, but has it created jobs for new graduates? I would say some of the private sector jobs, yes, they are for the graduate, but the security in those private sector jobs is what is so wanting. Given that some of the private sector, they promise you a job, but it's a contract to your job. African economies are growing quickly, but there's this unemployment. Why do we need to match the job prospects with the economic growth? There has to be a match because if something is beyond, for instance, if you have the market is way beyond your education level, there, there won't be productivity because I, I, w I wouldn't be able to survive in this, you know, this uh, gap. And in as much as Kenya is really trying, yes, we have the private sector, they still need to, re you know, like re changing everything about our education system. I, ca I cannot really be going to the library and study a book that was published in 1969. We're in 2012, as in a whole 40 plus years, things are changing. As in, unless we put, we have, we have, we close that gap, we will still have the same problems.